Islamic extremists are aggressively persecuting Christians in Nigeria in what some are calling a religious genocide. How are they getting away with it, and why isn't there more of an outcry in the West? Joining us now with analysis is director of the Center of Religious Freedom at the Hudson Institute, Nina Shea, and from New York, a priest who serves in the epicenter of the persecuted Nigerian population from, from the uh, local diocese there, Father Joseph Fidelis. Thank you both for being with us. Now, last week, the Nigerian government finally acknowledged what church leaders have been saying for years that the Christians are the target of jihadi terrorists in Nigeria. In a press conference, the Minister of Information and Culture there, Lai Mohammed, had this to say about Boko Haram. Quote, they have started targeting Christians and Christian villages for a specific reason, which is to trigger a religious civil war and throw the nation into chaos. By targeting Christians, they seek to promulgate the falsehood that the democratically elected Nigerian government does not care to protect them. Nina, Boko Haram has been targeting Christians for almost two decades. Um, uh, Major General uh, Muhammadu uh, Buhari was voted in in 2015 because he promised to rout out Boko Haram, okay? Why has it taken so long for the government to even acknowledge what Boko Haram is doing? Yeah, well, it, they're hit, part of his, the problem, Raymond, is that his Klansmen are part of the, the uh, mm. attackers, the Fulani herdsmen. Uh, he is a Fulani, and he has been reluctant. He's been accused by uh, Bishop Kuka and others in the Catholic Church in Nigeria that he is, uh, you know, really protecting them and failing to protect the Christians who are being slaughtered. And the, Ful the Fulani uh, herdsmen you mentioned, they are Muslims. That's the Muslim. They are Muslim. Uh, and uh, there's a radicalized um, segment of them that are coming into villages, slaughtering um, Christians, and 100% of their targets are Christian civilians, 100% mm. of their Before targets. Before I go to Father Joe, why should those watching in Europe or in the United States, why should they care about what's happening to a group of Christians in a far-flung country like Nigeria? Well, uh, you know, there are several reasons. One is our own self-interest. Uh, ISIS and Al-Qaeda are both there in this region. And they have joined together. The general of American Special Operations for Africa said this is the only place in the world where this has happened, where ISIS and al-Qaeda are not competitors, but have actually joined together to, for ethnic cleansing purposes, for genocidal purposes, to eradicate Christian presence. But Father Joe, you work directly with the people in your diocese who've suffered trauma. What are they telling you? What are the cases you're hearing about on the ground that perhaps we haven't heard? Yeah, thank you very much. Working with my people in my degree, I work basically with people who have been internally displaced and live in these camps. And a lot of them are victims who run away from their villages because they have, their villages have been attacked or they, their loved ones have been killed. And so they have to run into the bigger center, which is in my degree, to find shelter, and most of them live in camps. There in those camps, we meet men and women and children, but above all, women who have received various forms of violence, mm. they have seen their loved ones killed, they have lost their livelihood. So you see suffering, you see horror in the eyes of them. A lot of them have despaired, a lot of them have lost hope, a lot of them are going through a lot of traumatic experiences and they begin to tell you of not being able to sleep, they are not finding it easy to go to bed and they cannot talk to people. They are afraid and scared. Mm. And so we go into these camps while we offer them relief and support. We also want to accompany them, giving them psychosocial support, giving them psychological aid that will help them to overcome these difficulties mm -hmm. and pick up their lives, even as they live in the camps. Uh, Father, earlier this year, four seminarians were abducted and one was killed last month. What def effect did that have and is it having on the Catholic community in Nigeria? I mean, are people afraid to go to church? Are they afraid to evangelize? Nigeria is split evenly, 50% Christian, 50% Islamic. Yeah, no doubt the big effect it is having on the general population is that people are afraid. People are afraid for their lives. People no longer feel secured. People not, no longer feel protected. Yes, people are afraid, but you see, people are also hopeful. We are people who believe in God, and we believe that we can go to God and ask for help. So, yes, people are afraid, but they still go to church and look up to the religious leaders that who can you know, 
bring up their worries and difficulties and present them to the government and ask the government to do their responsibility of defending the citizens or providing security for the citizens. Mm -hmm. So yes, uh, people are afraid, people are terrified, yeah. but they, are, they still go to church and they still worship God. Yes. Nina, outspoken Nigerian Bishop Matthew uh, Kuka, we were talking about him just before the, the show, uh, he has charged that, quote, the government has created the conditions to make it possible for Boko Haram to believe the way or behave the way they are behaving. Is that the case? Yes, uh, they're allowed to slaughter and behead people. There have been about two dozen beheadings of Christians since Christmas mm. um, with impunity. And they, they are not punished. There's no defense. You know, when, when the Christians know the attackers are coming, they call for help and the help does not arrive. Mm. Um, they're t stopping buses um, in, in various countries now in Africa and taking the Christians off and asking them if they're Christian or Muslim and if they don't deny their faith, they're slaughtered on the spot. Mm -hmm. And yes, they're courageous people. Father Fidelis, I just had the uh, honor of being with him on an uh, Ave Maria Law School in Florida uh, the last weekend for a conference on this. And um, he is incredibly brave because people have been beheaded on the road outside his city that he has mm -hmm. to travel and to travel to even come here. Uh, so he is extremely courageous. Um, and you mentioned the seminarian who was killed, right. Michael Yadi was his name. Um, the, at his funeral, Bishop Kuka, a Catholic bishop, said something very, very important. He said, Christians must rise up and defend their faith with their moral weapons. And he was saying that we have to really show our love. We have to, for these people who are being victimized, we have to pray for them. We have to um, learn about them and learn their names and, and press our own government. Father Joe, what does that mean to you when, you're, when you hear that quote, that we have to rise up and use all of our moral weapons? What does that mean? And also, the, it seems there was a 2017 Pew uh, research poll that found 20 percent of Nigerian Muslims had a favorable view of ISIS. How does that affect Christians and how they are seen in your country? Thank you very much. The question, how do we feel about the statement of the bishop, uh, Bishop Kuka, in his homily? It is true, we as Christians have never preached violence. We have never called for a revenge or eye and eye for an eye. Where we are being killed, we still pray for our persecutors. So yes, uh, we have a moral courage, we have a moral weapon, that is what we call for. And we have many times called on people to be calm, to be prayerful. But mm -hmm. sometimes when people are pushed to the world, they become scared. And we normally will turn to the government and say, do your work, provide security for people. Mm -hmm. As of the fact of people uh, having some leaning towards ISIS or favoring other forms, no doubt every religion you find the good and the bad. There are good Muslims and good people who want to live in peace. But those, for instance, who want to have leaning towards ISIS, towards other extreme groups, through, towards some fanatics, they hold those views. But does that account for what every Muslim will want? We, probably that will not be the case. But when you find such instances, that is when the government comes in to say, people have the right to practice their own religion. Everyone is entitled to his freedom of religion and conscience, and people should have the peace to worship God in peace. So it is then the responsibility of the government to create that environment mm -hmm. so that we can worship God in peace. Nina, is the goal of Boko Haram here to incite civil war, as the government is, is, is claiming? Well, its ultimate goal, Raymond, is to create a caliphate, to have uh, to cleanse the area of non-Muslims and not the and, and non-radical Muslims. They want to radicalize the whole continent, mm. and um, they the, even the places where they're cohabitated in peace for many years, they are now radicalizing and is turning violent, like in Burkina Faso. So, uh, yes. Yeah, uh, Nina, I want to share with you uh, some and our audience some of the destruction that Boko Haram has wielded and created in Nigeria. To date, it's estimated Boko Haram has killed more than 27,000 civilians in Nigeria, uh, Christian and Muslims. This is greater than the amount of civilians killed in Iraq and Syria combined. Open Doors calculates more than 7,000 Nigerian Christians have been killed because of their faith in the last three years. And at least 1,300, more than 1,300 Christians were killed by Islamic groups last year alone. The Christian Association of Nigeria reports that 900 churches in northern Nigeria have been destroyed. Father, is what you're seeing a genocide? Is that what your people are enduring? 
when there is a serious displacing of people from their native homes, when people are killed and slaughtered and uh, people are denied their right to worship in peace, what would you call that? People driven from their homelands, people massacred in large numbers, people killed in a very brutal way, people denied their freedom. How would we define that? Yeah. Is it not moving towards genocide? Well, it is left for people who have conscience to think about that. But it's a very, very serious situation. Mm -hmm. And what we are calling for is to stop that massacre, to stop the killing, the mindless killing of people in a very mm -hmm. gruesome and brutal way. That is what we are saying. Yeah. Nina, we saw a global uh, outcry when those uh, 276 Christian girls were kidnapped around the world. There was outcry and sadness. Michelle Obama held up the hashtag, not our girls, they bring back the girls campaign. A hundred of those girls still are missing today. When you look at those statistics, why isn't there more being, attention being paid? And what can the U.S. government do at this point? You're so right. The, the, the African church is the beacon of hope for Christianity. Both it's the future for, of the church. It's the future of the church in sheer numbers. It surpassed Latin America in the number of Christians just this past year. Mm -hmm. uh, the administration has named a special envoy for the Sahel, which is a selection of countries. Doesn't cover nearly all of them where we're seeing this persecution or even all all of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. We need to get on this. Um, they, the administration, I think, is working on it, but we need to hurry. We need to start documenting this. We need to collect evidence of genocide and start putting bearing down on the governments of the region to do more to protect mm -hmm. their own civilians. This is their first job. Father, you issued a letter. You're looking for uh, United States interaction and really world intervention here. What are you looking for? What are you hoping for? From the uh, American government and, and the powers that be, of course there are t channels, there are media, medium that can be used to make our government to stand up to her responsibility. So the United States government can help to bring help to our people through different means, mm -hmm. through diplomatic channels, through trade agreements, mm. through entering into uh, talks with our government, like the, the envoy to Sahel that has been appointed. Why can't there be another, probably, an mm -hmm. envoy to the Lake Chad region that oversees that and is able to go into a lot of negotiation with our government or help our government to build intelligence, to build capacity, and see how those forces, Boko Haram, Islamic State of West African province, mm -hmm. and the Fulani that moves from one region to another to bring about the neutralization of these people and stabilize the regions. Nina Shea, I'm going to give you the last word here. Yeah, we need to engage with the Africans. There's, uh, because it's the beacon of hope for the church, because ISIS and Al Qaeda is establishing a caliphate there, and because of just Christian love, we need to get involved. Mm -hmm. We'll leave it there. Thank you for making us aware of this. You can follow Nina Shea's reports on the persecution of Christians in Nigeria and all over the world at Hudson.org. Father, thank you so much. We'll certainly be praying for you and your people in the days ahead. Thank you very much for having me on this and continue to pray for us so that we can have peace in our country. Thank you. Thank you.